Hi, my name is Unika Walcott, and I really cannot choose a favorite episode of Marketers Take Flight. What I will say is that Marketers Take Flight has been an invaluable resource in my career, one that I have gone on to share with interns because I remember back in 2014, 2015, stumbling upon the blog and being like, my God, this is exactly what I need. And I can't imagine that I would have lasted longer than two years in this business without it. So thanks, Lindsay. Keep going. We need you. Hey there. Welcome to the Marketers Take Flight podcast. I am your host, Lindsay Divin, founder of Marketers Take Flight and the creator of the Proposal Pro course. I am obsessed with helping AEC marketers just like you put order back into the proposal process, create winning strategies, and build the confidence and courage to advance your career. Each week, I will be sharing tangible and tactical advice and inspiring interviews to fly through the proposal turbulence and have your career take off. So let's dive right in. Hey there, and welcome to Marketers Take Flight, the podcast show that helps in-house marketing professionals in architecture, engineering, and construction firms soar higher with their marketing strategies. I'm your host, Lindsay Divin, and today we're going to dive into a crucial topic for any marketer out there, calls to action. Now, before we get started, let me ask you something. Have you seen a commercial, an ad, or a website that you that left you completely confused about what you were supposed to do next? I know I have, and it's not a really great feeling. In fact, sometimes it's downright frustrating. Imagine if AEC marketers didn't use calls to action in their marketing efforts. It would be chaos. People would be visiting your website, looking around your content, but not really knowing what to do next. They might be interested in what you have to offer, but they wouldn't have a clear path to follow. And without that clear path, they'd be more likely to leave your website and move on to something else. So let's talk about calls to action and why they matter so much for AEC marketing. At its core, a call to action is a prompt that encourages your audience or your visitor to take a specific action. This could be anything from filling out a form, downloading a white paper, or even scheduling a consultation. But why are calls to action so important? Well, for starters, like I said earlier, they give your audience a clear path to follow. Instead of being left wondering what to do next, a well-crafted call to action tells that person exactly what action they should take. This not only improves the user experience, but also increases the chances of them taking that desired action. Okay, another reason calls to action are essential is that they help you achieve your marketing goals. Whether it's generating leads, increasing conversions, or driving new opportunities, calls to action give your audience the nudge they need to take that action and move closer to becoming a contact and potentially a client. So now that you know that you need CTAs, calls to actions, for your online marketing, let's talk about what they are how to create them, and where and how you should be using them in your marketing efforts. Okay, ready to get started? First up, let's start by really making sure that you understand what calls to action are and what I specifically mean when I refer to a CTA um, in this episode and other future episodes. So what is a CTA? A CTA or call to action is a prompt that encourages your audience to take a specific action. Again, like I said, it could be anything from filling out a form, downloading a white paper, or clicking on a blog article. Think of a CTA as that virtual tap on the shoulder that tells your audience or your website visitor visitor what to do next. Without a clear CTA, that person... um, while they might be interested in what you have to offer, they won't know how to take the next step. And so that's why CTAs are so important. They provide a clear path for that person to follow. And I like to categorize CTAs into two types, big asks and little asks. A big ask requires someone to leave the platform they are on and go somewhere else. 
or a big ask may ask that person to do some, do something um, away from your website. Um, it takes more effort and not everyone will be declined to do it. Big ask example CTAs could be to fill out a form to get our checklist or call us to schedule a consultation or subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcast. Because a big ask takes that visitor and your audience away from your website or ask them to do something more than just click here, th that person really needs to know, like, and trust you to perform the action you want them to take or the offer has to be really good and valuable to them. That's why it's important to strategically spread out your big asks by sprinkling in small asks, which are easier and kind of less pressure. A small ask doesn't require anyone to leave your platform or your website or give you any of their information. It doesn't take a lot of brain power. It's kind of like a no brainer. Small ask examples for your website could be asking them to click on a related project page or a related blog article. You will likely notice that you will get more engagement when you ask for it in small, simple ways. And that's not to say you should never ask anyone to leave your website or ask them to fill out a form, but you just want to use them sparingly. So to sum up, sum this up, a CTA is a prompt that guides your audience towards a desired action. There are big asks and small asks, and it's important to strategically use both of these kinds to engage your audience and encourage them to take action. So next up is how to create effective C CTAs for your AEC marketing. Um, so let's talk about how to create this. You want your CTAs to make your visitors go, raise their hand and go, yes, yes, please, and take action without a second thought. So to do this, let's first start talking about your design. Your CTAs need to be visually appealing and attention grabbing. Think of it as like a shiny disco ball or that inflatable balloon guy on the side of the road outside the car dealership. You want to use bright colors, bold text, high quality graphics to make your CTA stand out. But you don't want to go overboard, right? You don't want your CTAs to make your web page look like a circus. Unless that's what you're going for if, if you provide circus design. So what I recommend is using contrasting colors of your brand or, you know, the, contra the contrasting colors of your brand colors. I have found in my own experience that bright yellow boxes with black text do really well. And the boxes I'm talking about are the buttons literally that say click here. So, and that leads me to my next, um, aspect of design, and that's your copy, you, the actual text in your call to action. This, is, this, this type of copy is your heart and soul of your CTAs. This copy needs to be clear, concise, and compelling. This is not the time or the place to get really cute or too creative or use industry jargon. You want to use words, action words, like get, download, register, request a consult um, to encourage your audience or that visitor to take that action. And I know our websites aren't e-commerce and our website visitors aren't adding quote unquote architectural services to the cart, but there is something so powerful about trying to create a sense of urgency with your calls to action. So while you most likely won't be using um, text like, quote unquote, limited time offer or, quote unquote, act now, try to use other urgency type words. For example, if you have a webinar, you can maybe use words like save your seat now or sign up now to join us live. Or if you are putting together content or a resource for um, on a code or a policy or legisl legislative change, you can use a sense of urgency with a little bit of fear to get them to download or sign up for the resource. Words or phrases like, don't get caught without da-da-da-da-da, 
or don't start your next eight elementary school project without knowing dot, 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 dot. And that, and that could be about the change of the policy or the legislation change. You want your audience to feel like they will miss out on something amazing if they don't click on your CTA button ASAP, like right that second. And a really good resource I've been using to help me fine tune and ideate different calls to action words has been ChatGPT. I'll copy and paste my landing page text or my social media caption and ask it to write me different calls to action text in different tones with different sense of urgency, et cetera, et cetera. And while it always doesn't, it doesn't always get me hundred percent there. It really helps me get closer to the final CTA language. And it usually only takes a matter of minutes. Okay, friend, are you still with me? Are you beginning to understand the power of an expertly crafted CTA? If so, let's now talk about where you should be putting these CTAs. Specifically, let's talk about where to place your CTAs on your website. It's like a game of musical chairs, if you can envision that. You want your CTAs, um, you want to make sure they're in the right place at the right time to get that website visitor to take that action. So when that music stops, you want them to click on that button. If you can just envision musical chairs with me. So let's start by talking about your homepage. Your homepage is prime real estate for your CTAs. You want to make sure your CTAs or a CTA is prominently displayed on your homepage. Think of it as like a neon sign on a dark street. You, You want to shine it at them and make and attract them to it. You can use a sticky header or a footer or a pop-up or a slide inbox or a banner image. All those are easily added to most websites these days, and they really are effective at grabbing your audience's attention and directing them towards that desired action. And I know what you may be thinking, especially if you work at an architecture firm. (laughs) No way can you get one of these buttons on your homepage. I look at dozens of AEC websites every month, and I'm seeing this trend of one big image or some video playing in the background that is pretty much taking all the the landscape above the fold of your homepage, and either with a click to scroll down or a hidden menu on there. And there's usually just one big headline, like your tagline, that I know you guys spent months getting consensus and approval on that one big headline over that one big image. And while those websites look very clean and very modern, but if, and that's okay, but if your goal and your, and, and what you want your website to do, do be or do If you want your website to be part of your online marketing and your lead generation efforts, whether it's lead generation for new employees or new clients, then you're missing out on not having a CTA on your homepage. If you have a key piece of content or a key downloadable checklist or a guide that is perfect for your ideal persona, why not put it on your homepage? Why bury it? three pages deep on a project page that you hope that somebody gets there. But if you can't just get, if you just can't get buy-in to change your homepage, you can also place, it's not wrong to place CTAs on your project or your service pages or your blog posts or, or create new landing pages. Um, So it's not wrong. I think it just won't be as effective. Um, But you know, a lot of your websites right now don't have any CTAs anywhere on your website. So by even placing them on your project or your service pages, your blog posts and your landing pages, you're already going to see an increase in conversion. So while placement is important, it is not everything. You want to make sure that your CTAs are relevant to the content on the page you're putting it on. So if you're promoting a white paper, make sure that CTA is related to that white paper. If you're promoting a webinar, make sure the call to action on that page is related to that webinar. You don't want to confuse your audience with having CTAs on a page that have nothing to do with that page 
or too many CTAs on a page and they're just overwhelmed with de decision. So last but not least, let's look, let me talk about some examples of AEC companies that have effectively placed CTAs on their website. So one great example is SRF and their website is srfconsulting.com. And they have not one, but two very clear and concise CTAs front and center, literally centered on their homepage. One CTA um, clearly states, start a project. And the other CTA right next to it says, join our team. So can you tell me what their two goals are? They want to get people to start projects and they want people to join their company. Another great example of this homepage idea is WGI. They're my one of my our, our previous clients and they're based in Florida. Um, and their website is wgiinc.com. And they have several CTAs on their homepage. But I, what I really like is in the top right corner, they have a contrasting button that even moves and bounces a little bit. And it's in that bright yellow with the black text. And it clearly says, start your project. And even better, when you click on that, it takes you to a project intake form, which captures key information that I'm assuming is routed to some kind of BD or salesperson. And WGI, I just got to love on them a little bit more. They go even further with a chat bot that pops up to answer any questions the visitor may have. So they are really applying many of these consumer type marketing strategies to their AEC firm. And so to see these in action, um, you I've um, supplied screenshots of both their homepages with links to their websites over on the show notes page. And you can find that at marketerstakeflight.com forward slash 114, 114. So you can head over there and you can go see them in action and click on um, and go see their websites. So another type of CTA is a pop-up box for your website. And in my research, I couldn't really find them in use for many AEC firms. And I know you might be thinking, but pop-up boxes are so annoying um, as a user. They are. I get it. But they are so effective. In my own use, I get so many leads on all of my websites that have pop-up boxes. And I don't use them all the time. So I'll turn them on and turn them off, or I'll turn them on on some pages and not all the pages. So you can also think about, you know, placing a CTA pop-up box, maybe on a blog article that, Im that invites that visitor to download a guide or a checklist that is relevant to that blog topic. And by doing that, that is even more powerful in moving that visitor into your world, adding them to your email list, and then begin nurturing them through your email marketing. In also, because I see next to no AEC firms having these pop-ups on their websites, it's also a great differentiator for your firm. I often look to other B2B companies, especially those selling to government or other large institutions like healthcare systems for inspirations because their, their procurement and the way that they pursue work is very similar to ours. They have, they have to um, you know, go through selection committees um, they might not be competing on price. They might be competing on other factors, you know, so they have a lot similar marketing and business development challenges as we do in the AEC industry. And so I look to some of those larger com companies for marketing inspiration. So to sum it up, CTAs can be placed on various place pages of your website, but make sure they're relevant and attention grabbing. Look at other AEC companies for inspiration or other B2B companies um, on effective CTA placement. Okay, so now I've covered what CTAs are, how to design them, and where to place them throughout your website. Now it's time to talk about testing and measuring your CTAs. And I love this because it's like being a scientist, but instead of being in a lab with test tubes and microscopes, you're using data and analytics to improve your marketing strategy. And I really love geeking out on, on this stuff. So first things first, you know, why is it important to test and measure your CTAs? Well, for starters, you want to know what's working and what's not. 
It's like trying on that new outfit and checking yourself out in the mirror. Even better, like if you look at yourself in the mirror in the dressing room and then come home, I always try on the outfit again and look at it in my mirror because oftentimes they're very different. Um, And we want to make sure it looks good at all angles, right? So by testing and measuring your CTAs, you can see which ones are getting the most clicks and the most conversions and which ones maybe need some improvement. But you don't know if you don't track or measure. So how do you do this? How do you track CTA performance and measure its success? So there are a few key metrics you want to start paying attention to. So those are the click-through click through rate, which is abbreviated CTR, the conversion rate, and the bounce rate. So CTR, click-through rate, is the percentage of people who clicked on your CTA The conversion rate is the percentage of people who completed the desired action of your CTA. So if your desired action is filling out a form, then you would measure the number of people that are filling out that form. And then the bounce rate is the percentage of people who leave your website after clicking on your CTA. So by tracking these metrics, you can start getting a better understanding of how your CTAs are performing and making changes as needed. Um, And I know that was really high level and brief, but you guys can um, Google um, how to track these. You can also use some tools um, to test and measure your CTAs. The one that is probably the best is your Google Analytics. You can use that to track your website metrics. Um, There's other tools that you can pay for, like Hotjar will show how you your audience is actually interacting with each web page and your CTAs on those web page. And if you built your website using a service like HubSpot, um, they HubSpot also provides these kind of analytics. So testing and measuring your CTAs is crucial for your marketing strategy, keeping an eye on your CTR, your conversion rate, your bounce rate, and using tools will also help you track your metrics. Okay. Well, friend, this wraps up our episode on CTAs. I hope you're feeling inspired and ready to take action. Let me do a a quick recap. Um, We talked about what CTAs are, how to create effective CTAs that grab your audience attention and encourages them to take the desired action where to place your CTAs on your website for maximum impact, and how to test and measure your CTAs to improve your marketing strategy. Now it's time to put these tips into action. The first step is to create and use CTAs. Go and look at your website right now. Do you have any CTAs on your homepage? Do you have any CTAs on your blog pages, on your project pages? If the answer is no, what think about what are some of the CTAs you can add to these pages to guide the visitor to where that you want them to go and what you want them to do next. Okay, so that's step number one. Then don't be afraid to experiment with different designs, copy, and placement to see what works best for your particular audience and your website visitors. And don't forget then to track your metrics and make changes as needed. It's like you know, baking a cake. Sometimes you just need to keep tweaking the recipe to make it perfect. In my mind, it's usually always adding a little bit more vanilla or a little bit extra chocolate chips. Um, that usually always helps me, my cakes taste a little better. And, and if you need help with how to make these changes and to, um, you know, optimize your CTAs, once you have them and you've started tracking how to make them better, go back and listen to next last week's episode number 113. Um, in that one, I showed I talked about how to optimize your online marketing. And in that episode, there are some tips specifically about your CTA performance. So I encourage you to start implementing CTAs in your AEC marketing strategies. Whether you're promoting a white paper, a webinar, or a consultation, or just guiding a visitor through your website and what project description you want them to look at next. ETAs can help turn your website visitors into new contacts, which could eventually become potential new projects. Then 
after you've done all that, stay tuned for next week's episode. It's going to be in a really new, fun format with some very special guests. So hit that follow button so you don't miss it. Okay, my friend, until next time, bye for now. Before I let you go, I wanted to remind you that I am celebrating 100 episodes this year, and I want to honor you, my amazing listener, for supporting my show. Be a part of this celebration by being featured on the podcast. Simply share your favorite episode with me by leaving a quick voicemail at marketerstakeflight.com forward slash favorite episode. Again, that's marketerstakeflight.com forward slash favorite episode. I can't wait to hear which episode has resonated with you the most. Thanks for being a part of this celebration and I'll see you in the next episode.